Well, as I said, I'm not John Stahl. My name is Keith Collette, and I'm one of the elders here at the church. And uh, it's my pleasure to give John a, a weekend off here. So uh, that's why I'm here. And for, uh, for anyone visiting, uh, you know, I won't be here next week, and there'll be somebody else. <laughs> but uh, uh, anyway, uh, when I retired a few years ago, I, I wanted to do some things for my children and one of the things I wanted to do was uh, you know build them a family tree genealogy and so on and so they know where they came from and so I did that I joined ancestor.com and I got really deep into it spent a lot of time as my wife will attest sitting on the computer tracing back our family both her family and my family so and so I could pass it on to my kids I thought it would be an important thing for them. Spent many hours. And I actually have a tree on each of our families back to the early 1700s and I have a sheet that I is some of them are more full than others but a sheet on everybody on that tree. Everything I could find about them. But the other thing I wanted to do for my kids is I wanted to share with them some of the life stories excuse me, the life thoughts that I had, the life sayings that I had that it helped me grow in my travels with Christ. To help me grow through life. I wanted to share that with them. So I sat down one day and I started typing away and I stopped at 116 things. And those are the things that I've passed on to my kids, my grandkids, passed it on to several of the children here and some of the adults here and so on. But it's things that guided me. And I can take each of those things and go back to the time, the moment in time in my life when I learned them. They were moments learned. And anybody ever wants that, I'll be more than free, uh, free to share that with you. But anyway, John always tells me anytime I need to fill in for him, well, what, am I, what should I preach about? He says, go look at your 116 things. You got 116 topics in there. So the one I chose for today was number 60. Because I chose, chose it because there's so much hatred out there in this world right now. Think about all the hatred there is. I mean, you, you turn on the news and it's... Everybody hates everybody anymore. You wear the wrong hat. You do this, you do that. And you get beat up. All sides hate each other. So I chose number 60. Treat everyone equally and with respect. Respect. Do not discriminate. Another thing I did is I, after I retired, I got involved with my other passion other than I loved the job I had at, at Goodyear but I had another passion in life was history so I got involved with the Summit County Historical Society and I started uh, working in fact Leanne over back here is the president of the society and become a very close friend of Lynette and my and her and Donnie Donnie plays up here but um, Anyway, I started out as a volunteer giving tours of the Perkins Stone Mansion in Akron and giving tours of the John Brown House. And I learned so much more about the, the history of our, uh, our area, but I also learned a lot from, from the John Brown House. We started a renovation this last year on the house to improve it uh, and bring it up to uh, restorable standards. And it, it looks beautiful now on the outside. We're working on the inside right now. We're doing new exhibits and so on to tell the life of a guy named John Brown. This whole process of working with the Historical Society has made me more aware of a lot of things and discrimination is one of the big ones. Slavery in this country. Did you know that there were 4.4 million slaves in this country in 1860 before the Civil War started? Did you know they were worth $800 a piece? That's $3.5 million. Excuse me, $3.5 billion. 
and assets that those people had. Do you know that the slaves started their work day at the start of the day on the sunrise? They didn't get to eat till noon. And then they had went go back into the field till sunset. And they then could have their supper. Do you know that they got two sets of clothes a year? One set for summer, one set for winter. Do you know, did you ever see the pictures of the whippings these people took? For the slightest offense? Do you ever hear the term sold down the river? Do you know what that means? Does anybody know what sold down the river means? In, the, in that period of time, what it was, was the uppity slaves in the northern part of the south, if they were uppity or the slave owner needed money, he would sell them to slave traders who would go down to Louisiana and sell them again. And in Louisiana, that was going down the Mississippi River. In Louisiana, they had a life expectancy of 18 months working in the, uh, in the cotton fields because of the heat and the disease and, the, and things like that. Do you know that the church has justified all this? Justified in slavery? All because the color of their skin. Along came a guy named John Brown, born in 1800, and he died in 1859. But he, in, uh, uh, he grew up in Hudson, Ohio. He lived in this house uh, uh, over by the uh, Perkins Stone Mansion. He lived in that house and when he had a partnership with uh, the Perkins to uh, raise sheep. But he dedicated his life to ending slavery in the United States. He was a very unusual man. A lot of people don't realize that he was a white man. He was a member of the Kent Church back when Kent was called, uh, uh, oh, oh, I'm forgetting the name, Franklin Mills. Thank you, Leanne. Franklin Mills. But he was uh, a member of his church there, and like a lot of churches, they had a family pew. It was a Kent Christian church, but they had a family pew. He invited the blacks sitting in the back row to come up and sit in his family pew. That next day, he was chastised by the leaders of that church. He not only felt that slavery was absolutely wrong, he felt that blacks were equal. How dare he? Most abolitionists believed slavery was wrong, but didn't do the things he did. He invited blacks to his table to sit down with his family and eat a meal. He called him Mr. and Mrs. He died in 1859. He was hung for what he did at Harper's Ferry, where he attacked Harper's Ferry, which was an arsenal where they built weapons, guns, and he wanted to take those guns and go into the hills and start a guerrilla warfare against the southern plantation owners. All of this opened my eyes to discrimination, not just black and white, but all the ways that we discriminate against people and don't give people fair chance in life and truth. Come visit me at the John Brown House, Perkins Mansion. I'll give you a tour and we'll talk more about that. But uh, Jason, could you put up my first verse there? This is Matthew twenty-two thirty-nine, and the second is like it: love your neighbor as yourself. And I'll read that again. And the second is like it: love your neighbor as yourself. Does it say love your neighbor unless? Unless they're a different race than you, they're different skin color. Does it say love your neighbor unless they have a different religion? They're Muslim, Buddhist, or Catholic? 
Does it say that? Does it say love thy neighbor? Unless you have different political views. Democrat or Republican. Does it say love thy neighbor unless you're a different gender? Or does it say fairness for all? Does it say love thy neighbor unless they have a dish different sexual uh, persuasion than you? Does it say love thy neighbor unless they have a different nationality? You know, this is a country of very mixed nationalities. This is the melting pot, supposedly, of the world. What is an American? He's a conglomeration of a lot of us. We're all mutts. Does it say love your neighbor unless they're in a different socio-economic class? Does it say love thy neighbor unless they have a different education level than you? Does it say love thy neighbor unless they're a different age group? And I don't mean just old, I mean teenagers. If they're in a different age group, must be something wrong with them. Is that what, is that what God, uh, Christ said to us? You put up the next one there, uh, Jason, Romans. Romans 13, 19, or excuse me, 13, 10. Love does no harm to a neighbor. Love does no harm to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. Everyone deserves truth. Everyone deserves fairness. Do you feel that? Don't you want to be treated fair? Or do you want to be treated as one of these different groups? Do you want fairness and truth always to persuade, no matter what? That's what God wants. Can you put up the next one? I found this in Exodus, and, and uh, do not, this is Exodus 2, or, or 23, 1 through 9. Do not spread false reports. Oh my gosh, gossip? Do we spread false gossip about people in our neighborhoods? Do we do it at school? Do we do it at church? Do not help a guilty person by being a malicious witness. Truth. Do you hear anybody say, I've made up my mind, do not confuse me with the facts? I, that, I hear that from a few places every once in a while. Yeah. Do you hear that people are, you make people guilty by because they're associated with a certain group? You know, those Christians. They, you know, hey, that comes back on us. Those Catholics, those Muslims, those Democrats, those Republicans. Just because they're with a group, they must be evil. Seek the truth. Seek the truth. Verse 2. Do not follow the crowd in doing wrong. When you give testimony in a lawsuit, do not pervert justice by siding with the crowd. And do not show favoritism to a poor person in a lawsuit. First of all, let's talk about the crowd. Is the majority always fair? Is it always right? Does it always speak the truth? I mean, today, we get wrapped up in these majority things sometimes and we think it's right. Innocent until proven guilty. Do we forget that? Isn't that what our country's founded on? Innocent until proven guilty? Again, seek the truth. Verse 4, or excuse me, before I go to that, 
show favoritism to a poor person. Do you think we do sometimes show favoritism to poor people? Because they're poor, they're innocent? Because they're poor, they're this? Or do we seek the truth? Don't make labels on people before we know the truth and the facts. People with money are not always guilty. People that are poor are not always guilty either. Verse 4. If you come across your enemy's ox or donkey wandering off, be sure to return it. If you see the donkey of someone who hates you falling down under its load, do not leave it there. Be sure you help them with it. Do we do that? Do we help those we hate? Do we help those that hate us? Do you ever stop and help somebody that had a car broken down? Or you like me one time, you know, Annette and I were going to our sons in Chicago, and I guess it was in the one going to the one in Minnesota, and uh, I saw a car with a woman in it outside of it and she was out of gas and she had a baby and a uh, mother her mother in there and she was didn't know what to do she didn't really have any money to buy gas she was trying to get off to the exit and thought maybe her her dad would come but no he wouldn't come so Lynette and I stopped and I thought oh no <laughs> because she had a gas can but there was no lid on it so how am I going to get this gas in here and get it all back to her we got off the road there couldn't find a gas station finally found a gas station couldn't get back on the same way we spent an hour and a half helping this per person out but you know what and you know besides getting gas we got them water because it's a hot summer day you know what did it matter that she was poor did it matter that she was in trouble with her father and mother and so on no it mattered that she was a human being right it's a human being and we love our neighbors be fair to all regardless verse 6 do not deny justice to your poor people in their lawsuits suits you have nothing to do with a false charge and do not put an innocent or honest person to death for I will not acquit the guilty. It always bothered me when you watch these old movies and so on and how people, and you think about um, some of the crimes that uh, blacks get accused of and so on just because they're black. Does anybody care about the truth? Does anybody care that maybe that police officer actually thought that he was going to be hurt? We need to be fair to both sides, to all sides. We need to work on truth. Not just assume the black was right because, you know, all policemen are bad. Not think all blacks are bad and so on because that's what we do so often. We need to stick to the truth. Hey, do not accept a bribe. For bribe blind, blind, or blinds those who see and twist the word of the innocent. This thing in Chicago, and I don't remember the, I don't keep up with those kind of things on movie stars or what a TV guys, but that guy that paid those people to make it look like he was being roughed up because he was black. Does that hurt, help his side or does that hurt his side? When you take the side that you know is wrong, just because they're your group, does that help the truth? Does that really help that group or does it make it bad for them? Do not, nine, do not oppress a foreigner. You yourselves know how it feels to be foreigners because you are foreigners in Egypt. How many of you have been out of the country? You felt like a foreigner? You've been to a country that didn't speak English? Yeah. Did you feel like a foreigner? Did you feel uneasy? How do you think those people feel? You know, I've, I've been in every state in the Union. 
I've been in 31 countries. And you know what I found out about people? They're just like me and you. You know what their biggest concern is in life, most of them that I met? Their families. In any country you go to, they talk about their families. In fact, more so than they do, than Americans do. If you ever go to Mexico, go to, go to a park on Sunday and look at all the families out there having picnics. Matthew 7, 1 through 2. Do not judge, or you too will be judged. For in the same way you judge others, you will be judged. And with the measure you see, it will be measured to you. Anybody seen the movie Night's Tale? Nobody's seen it? <laughs> okay. Yeah, well, in Knight's Tale, the bad knight, through the movie, is always, when he beats uh, the good knight, he uh, tells him, you know, you've been measured and you didn't, you didn't measure up. Well, his exact words were, um, you have been weighed, you have been measured, and you have been found wanting. At the end of the movie, with the good knight standing over the bad knight after he just knocked him off his horse in a jousting contest, he stood over him and he said, you have been weighed, you have been measured, and you have been want found wanting to him. Do you know where that comes from? Did you know that was in Daniel 5.27? In Daniel 5.27 says, you have been weighed on your own scales and been found wanting. You set these scales for other people. And you know what? You don't measure up on those scales. You're found wanting. <clears throat> you want to put the next one up, Matthew? You have heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of your Father in heaven, that you may be children of your Father in heaven. He causes his Son to rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. If you love those who love you, what reward will you get? Are not even the tax collectors doing that? And if you greet only your own people, what are you doing more than others? Do not even pagans do that? Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. People, there's a world full of hate. People do hate you. But you know what? We're Christians. Don't respond back. Do you remember the movie? How many, I know there's everybody who's seen the Star Wars movie, right? All right. What are they always trying to get Luke to do in that movie? Go to the dark side. What do we? Fa what are we faced with in this world? right now when so many people hate us and so many people put down other people because of what they you know what they perceive them to be don't go to the dark side with them show them that we're Christians show them that we love our neighbors it doesn't matter what they say does not I'm not saying agree with them I'm not saying don't resist I'm saying because remember, Luke fought his father. But he fought his father and he wanted to, his father wanted him to get angry and hate and hate and hate. Remember the emperor saying that? Let the hate take over. Don't let the hate take over you. Let the love show through. Because we are children of Christ.
I think one story that says a lot about this is the Good Samaritan. So if you throw that up there, Mr. Jason. Luke 10, 25 to 37. On one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What is written in the law, he replied. How do you read it? He answered, love your God, love you the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. You have answered correctly, Jesus replied. Do this and you will be live free. But he wanted to justify himself, so he asked Jesus, And who are my neighbors? Who are your neighbors? Who are your neighbors? In reply, Jesus said, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he was attacked by robbers. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road, and when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. So too a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, and you know Samaritans, they were hated by the Jews. And you know what? They returned to hate. But a Samaritan, as he traveled, came where the man was, and when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he put the man on his own donkey, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expenses you may have. Who is your neighbor? Is it only the people that agree with you? Is it only the people that are the same group as you? The same nationality? Go to the same church as you? Is it only Protestants versus Catholics? Who is your neighbor? Who do you love? Who are you supposed to love? We're all neighbors. In closing, I want to show this to say this. Can you put up Luke? But to you who are listening, I say, love your neighbors, or excuse me, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. Can you do that? Put up John. A new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are disciples. By this, everyone will know that you are disciples. Do you want to be known as Christ's disciple? Disciple? By loving others? Loving all, all others? Being fair to others? Again, I say you don't have to agree with people. You don't have to agree with them. But you need to love them. By that, by this, everyone will know that you are my disciples. By that, by loving. So as you go out into this world this week, take it with you. Don't look for the reasons to hate. If you're watching the news, CNN, Fox, whichever one it is, and they're talking about hate, you can listen to it, but you don't have to agree with it one way or the other. But you need to love others. It doesn't matter that they're different. We should be strong in our diversity. It's important. 
one of my 116 things is talking about the importance of diversity. We need it to be, and we are strong. How many of us here are, you know, we, we do these DNA things nowadays and find out we're not pure this or that. We're a bunch of mutts, like I said. Yeah. We love each other because we're all different and we're better because of it. So love. Don't go to the dark side. You want to bow your heads? Dear Lord, thank you for entering our hearts today and please Lord, put love in there. Make High Point Christian Church known as a church of love. And worship the differences that even we have because it makes us stronger. But we love each other, Lord. That's what's important. Because you know what, Lord? You loved us in spite of us. You loved us. We don't measure up. We don't measure up to our own standards. But you loved us. That's what's important. Help us to return the love to our neighbors. Pray in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen.